Hi everybody, welcome to the seventh lesson of Learn Revit API course. In this lesson, I want to show you how you can reuse your code with PyRevit. And this is something that I wish someone showed me when I started, as it would have helped me a lot. Imagine that you have a few lines of code that you need to put in nearly every script. Naturally, you're going to copy and paste them in all the scripts. And then one day you need to make changes to these lines everywhere. You need to go through all the files, find all the scripts and adjust them one by one, which just sounds horrible and it's very easy to make mistakes. But if you would reuse your code, you would just change it in one place in the library of your code snippets. And this change would be instantly applied to all your scripts where it was ever used. And this is why you should learn how to reuse your code as soon as possible with PyRevit. So let's jump straight into Revit and I'm going to explain it as we go. Right here, you can see the folder structure that I showed you earlier. You know, you, we have our that extension, that tab, that panel, that push button that make our extension, but also we have special folders, which are purple here, which is our library and our hooks. We're not going to talk about hooks now, we're going to focus on the library, because PyRevit already has this functionality built in. It has this library folder where you can put all reusable code. And if you're going to look at this folder structure, right here you have your extension, tab, library, it doesn't matter what happens under, but inside the library folder, what you need to understand, in every single folder and nested folder, you need to put this underscore underscore init underscore underscore that py file. And this tells Python to treat this folder structure as the package, and therefore you'll be able to kind of go in your files, in folders, and import all the functions, classes, even variables that you need in all other scripts. And inside this library, you can put your special files where you're going to put all the reusable code, and you can also create folders and put different files in there. You don't have to create just one Python file, you can organize it however you want. Now, let's open the extension that you've already created by this point, hold Alt and click on any of these buttons so we can open the folder where it's located. Now let's go outside until we go to the dot extension of whatever you called your folder. I called my Learn Revit API. Now in here you already have hooks and library. If you've created your extension differently, just make sure you create here a library folder. And inside of it, you already have a few files if you use my EFR Revit starter kit. And if you made it on your own, it's going to be empty. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to explain. First of all, you need to create this kind of file, right? You can just right click, click on new, maybe text document, I need underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. This is very important, because you see this library folder, PyRevit automatically looks inside of it. And if it's going to see this underscore underscore init python file, then will, it will automatically think that it's a package. And you don't have to write anything inside of it. You can also write something inside of it, but I'm not going to cover this part. You just have to have these files. Also, in here you can see I already have my folder snippets. And again, inside of it you also would need to put another init file. And then if we would create here another folder, let's say for example Eric, then guess what? When we're gonna go inside, first thing we do, we paste exactly this init file. And then in here we can put some kind of file, let's make a text, test.py. And the reason we do this, because now in our code we can write from snippets.eric.test import, and I can import whatever I'm gonna put in this test.py file. Now. Let's go one folder away and delete this Eric folder. It's a little bit an overkill. But you can see in my EFR starter kit, I already have here custom print. Inside, you can see I already prepared some code. I have my UTF encoding. Then I get PyRevit output so I can make more beautiful outputs. And then here, all I did is just made a bunch of print statements and I provide here some kind of button name. And it's used in all my buttons in PyRevit starter kit. So if I'm gonna click on this stack button, you'll see that it's gonna print this message and it's gonna say here stack button 1. If I'm gonna print here stack button 2, you'll see that it says stack button 2 and then the rest is gonna be always the same. And I didn't wanna copy and paste it everywhere, but instead I made this kind of function in my custom print and now I can import it everywhere. Let's hold alt and click for example on this button 2 because I also used it there. Open the python file and you'll notice that when I scroll all the way down, and then on the bottom you will see this delete below. And this is because this is a placeholder and I don't want you print it all the time. But in there it says from snippets that underscore custom print import whatever is the name of the function. And I also left a comment here that this reusable function comes from library snippets underscore custom print. And this is how you can reuse your code. Let me just go again here and in the snippets I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call it underscore selection.py. 
Also, the reason I use underscore here is because when I used to call it just selection, and then somewhere in my code, I would use selection and make it maybe a Python list. This would sometimes give me an error with very weird error statement because my variable name was matching the import that I was making and it was not very clear. I had, I've spent a lot of time debugging that and since then I always use this underscore or I make sure that it's named very unique. For example, I could name it EF selection. Then I know that, okay, this is my library and there's no way I'm gonna create this variable. Now, let's go back to the snippets and we're gonna open this selection.py file. See, inside of it, we would just code as usual. Let's just come here and maybe I'm gonna copy all the imports and UTF right here. We don't need any description and the name. And maybe we wanna simplify imports and variables so it doesn't take as much space. Then we're gonna code here reusable snippets below. I'm also not gonna use any lists and this is gonna be enough. Now, let's say we're gonna create a function to get selected elements. Now, to keep it simple, I'm actually gonna go to my code samples and right here in code samples, I'm gonna look at the selection. Inside of there, there are a lot of functions, but I'm just gonna take this first part, which is gonna be get selected elements. I have it, let's come back to my function and I'm gonna paste it here. Now, I need to change the selection. It actually comes from UI doc selection like this. And then with this code, in the first line, we're gonna get element IDs of all selected elements in the Revit UI. Then in the second line, we're gonna take all these element IDs, and we're gonna get the actual elements, right? By iterating through this list. And lastly, I wanna be able to also filter them to certain built-in classes or maybe types. In this case, let's add here filter types. And we're gonna see and try this. Let's also write here selected elements, and then we're gonna use the list comprehension. I'm gonna write, I wanna get all elements, or element in selected elements. And now we can make a if statement in the end. I'm gonna write if type of element in filter types. And now we're actually gonna return this list. However, we don't always wanna provide these filter types. So instead I'm gonna make none as default value. Then here we're gonna write, if we have anything provided in these filter types, then we're gonna filter these elements. And if not, we're just gonna return selected elements. We don't need this last line, it was just an example. You can see it's pretty much the same. Now, when you make your reusable functions, it's really recommended that you make a doc strings. And inside, I'm just gonna write something like get selected elements in Revit UI, and you can provide a list of types for filter type parameters. Here's, for example, gonna be an example. Selected walls equals get selected elements. And inside, we need to provide a list of wall. Maybe we could also provide floor if you want to have more than one. But for me, I just want to have one single class, class of wall. But now, how do you use? I've already prepared here reused code in PyRavid button. So let's open that and we're going to put some code inside there. Inside, you can see there is very regular import and variables. And now in the main section, we're going to import it. We're going to write from snippets. And you'll notice that we don't have any autocomplete. And this is because we haven't configured our environment. I also actually have to change it to Revit 2023 because I haven't noticed. And now look, if you're using PyCharm, you can click here on the project and you will see your library folder right here. You can right click it and you can mark directory as source root. Click on that and then PyCharm will be able to look inside this folder and help you with autocomplete. So now I can write here from snippets, then inside you can see there is selection and I want to import whatever function that I made which is going to be get selected elements. Now let's write selected elements equals get selected elements. And then we're also going to write here selected walls equals get selected elements. Inside we're going to provide a list of types and I'm just going to put a wall and maybe floor. Now let's make two print statements and we're going to print selected elements and selected walls. And now we're going to go to Revit and test if it actually works. And in case you use Visual Studio Code, you would open your Visual Studio Go to extensions, search for Python, then right click and there's going to be extension settings. Then go here in edit in settings in autocomplete and you would add here the path to your library folder. So you would just come here, copy this path and paste it somewhere here as the next one. Also make sure you make double slashes and so on. And this is supposed to work. Now, lastly, let's go to Revit and actually test it. Now I'm going to select all of that 
and we're gonna go and run the button. I'm gonna click here on run reusable code. I will get two list of elements. In the first one, we get everything. So we can see there is a wall, there's a text node, there's a floor and there's another wall. And in the second one, there's only walls and floors. The text node was excluded because we have this filter function created. And also a very important point. Keep in mind that in all the versions of PyRavid, we always had to reload our PyRavid whenever we make any changes in library. Otherwise, it would use the older code. I think in the newer version, it's always up to date. At least that's what I saw in my testing. But in the older version, it definitely was not the case. I spent a couple days trying to fix an issue which wasn't even an issue. I was just changing the code, but I was always running my old code with an error. And it was driving me nuts because I would rewrite it every way possible. I knew that there cannot be any errors and I would still get the old errors over and over and over. Until eventually I noticed that my print statements doesn't work and I realized, okay, I think I'm not using the correct version. So if you notice something like that, just go to PyRavid, click on reload and then it's going to be fine. And all right, now your homework is I want you to create a few functions in your library to test them and see if they work. And don't forget to reload your PyRavid in case you don't see any changes. And we've covered quite a lot about PyRavid already. And in the next lesson, I'll teach you how to back up your PyRavid extension on GitHub and how to share it with the team. Because trust me, you don't want to lose your code and the Git is the best way to secure it and have the version control. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.